Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have well, some Nick fun. Nick Collier here. Uh, we have got a project and a half here. Uh, oh, it must have been about a month ago. A uh, guy gives me a call on the phone and says, uh, Hey, I've got a, a a roller that's got a couple of broken teeth. And I said, well, bring it on down. Um, of course, take it apart. Bring down the couple of teeth uh, that are broken on the gears. And uh, I'll see what I can do. So he brings this shaft down and uh, shows it to me. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. I'd say it's got a couple of broken teeth on it. What do you think? <laughs> Just stripped to shit. But luckily it's still got, in this section here, it's still got some teeth. So uh, we're able to use that. Now, uh, he's telling me that uh, he thinks it's an American-made uh, roller. And of course, uh, it's not. And... So we've got to come up with a metric cutter. And, uh, well, uh, after a lot of exploring, a lot of figuring, trying to figure it out, and nobody having it, I, I called a couple of companies and they said, oh yeah, we can get you one. And I said, well, how long is it going to take? Oh, six weeks. And I'm thinking, six weeks? Where does it come from? Oh, it's made in China. So I went on eBay, and, and, and it's 170 bucks. I was like, okay. Uh, so I went on eBay, and I looked up the same, the same cutter, and it's 20 bucks on eBay uh, from China, probably the same company. And, uh, you know, uh, we are now four weeks into the shipment of it from there to here. And it's supposed to show up any day. And that's why I'm getting started on this. Because uh, we've got to uh, come in and we need to weld up this whole mess right here. And uh, see what we can do with it. And then recut it, of course. Now, the other side of this gear, or this shaft, are the gears. And of course when the shaft ate itself up, it pretty much chewed up some of the gears too. This one's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, but you can see there's a couple of teeth that are a little muscle. So there's a chewed up tooth right there. And it literally it took the broken teeth from the shaft and just embedded it in down into the root of the uh, of the gear itself. So uh, a little bit of repair on these. And I told them, I says, well, we can make new ones, or we can just go in and repair what we've got. And, uh, you know, this, these things travel pretty slow. It's a roller. And uh, so I'm guessing, you know, what, one RPM, two RPMs maybe? So it isn't like we got a high speed howl that we've got to deal with. So all we're really dealing with is a mesh of teeth. So we just clean up these teeth. And of course, weld and repair that. So, in the next couple of days, we've got a a, a cutter coming, and uh, but first we've got to take some measurements from these from these uh, two. Right, teeth. First thing we're going to do before we take any measurements at all is we're going to get a contour, and it looks to me like this tooth here is about where we want to do we. I'm hoping to get a contour of these three valleys, one, two, three, with some uh, oil clay. See what we got. Not too bad, but it didn't go down all the way. So we'll do it again.
try to warm this stuff up just a little bit. Give it another go. And all we want here is a reference. Because once we weld this, we're not going to have anything to refer to. And all we need is a, just the ability to come back to a shape. Come on. Ah, much better. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think it bottomed out that time. Yep. Yes, it did. So now we'll just take this and set it aside somewhere safe. And we'll know we've got the contour. Now we're got gonna, gonna come in and take some measurements. Okay, so we've got our gear, our best tooth facing up. You know what I'm noticing? I'm noticing that right in here is where the actual tooth face is just about perfect. Somehow, as we get up into here, it kind of tapers up and spreads out so and that's our best tooth right there so we'll just measure from that and we're going to go down and wiggle back and forth wiggling back and forth like this not bad i already went in and measured it and then we measure the top from the from the root up to the top of the uh, tooth and that is pretty well set there and what's our measurement and 10 215 thousandths wide and that's this measurement right here and then here we have 200 and 50, 75, looks like 280. So, uh, let's write that down. We'll be back. Okay, and the other thing we need is the width of the, of the um, top of the tooth. Oops. And we're trying to come in down in the very place where there's no wear. And it looks like we're going to answer that phone. Okay, so we're going for the width of the crown of the tooth here. And I'm getting my cheater glasses on so I can make sure and get it right. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because all of this is going to disappear once I start welding. That looks like about it right there. Yep. So we are at 75, 83 thousandths. Thank you.
Okay, and we want the overall height or the overall diameter. And that we are sitting at 14th teeth, so we are directly across, yes. Overall diameter is one inch. 895 thousandths. Okay. Write that down. And our inside diameter, just to make sure we've got, let's make sure we're at zero. We are. One inch, three hundred and forty-five thousandths. And we're going to count the teeth and make sure we've got the right count here. Starting with tooth number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen teeth, just what I was thinking. Well, I mean, I can do it, but it's going to break tips left and right. It just shattered that one. I think better that we go in with the grinder and just grind the shit out of it. But we can put it on the lathe and use the grinder. Once I got down below the surface of the of the um, heat treating, uh, the metal was a little softer. But I mean, I don't know what this material is, but it is hard. And uh, so I thought it's best that we get down below the surface of, of the gear itself um, so that when I start to cut it with the cutter, it's a consistent surface. And the cutter doesn't have to fight its way through this really hard stuff. Now I believe the hard stuff was not made for the for the gear, but for the bushing uh, or the bearing surface just behind it, because the bearing literally uh, is not a sealed bearing. It's just a bunch of roller bearings on that surface, just you know, behind the, the uh, gears. So we're cutting it all the way down and uh, as you can see, All right, well, we're about 20 or so thousands below the root of the tooth. Let me have a quick look here and make sure that, oh yeah, we've got a good, good amount down below that. Now what we need to do is come back in and build this back up to at least this size here, or a little bit bigger, 
so that we can trim that turn that down so that said let's uh, get rid of some sharp edges first So, now we've got to decide if we're going to arc weld it, fill this back in with arc, or braze it. And that's a tough decision. I guess it depends on how much pressure is against this. So, uh, we'll come back. Well, I don't know. You know, we're looking at this gear and you can see that it's gotten pretty chewed up. And this is just three teeth. Uh, all around this whole gear, there's, oh, probably 20 or 30 teeth that are fairly chewed up. Now, I, he doesn't want me to replace the gear or fix the gear even. You know, because, you know, he's trying to get away from this as, as least expensive as possible. So what I'm doing is coming in with a file and just knocking off the rough edges to get it down now i i think it's going to work out fine because this thing travels at about you know what two rpm or something like that so it's going to be okay as far as that's concerned the problem is is that if i go over to the uh the shaft that drives these gears and put a brass uh or braze uh, a filler in there and then cut that braze this gear the steel of this these mismatched gears will eat up that brass so i think what i need to do is weld the shaft to uh to match the gear so that the wear will happen evenly this is this is uh steel the shaft is steel, the weld will be steel, and that'll give me a little bit more um, even wear uh, as, as this thing gets used. So we're going to go over to the uh, shaft, and we're about ready to weld it, and uh, let's go from there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to weld this part of the shaft up to the height of the top of this gear. And then uh, we come in with the cutter and re recut a gear. So, uh, and this isn't too warm. It isn't, it's fairly cold, in fact. Uh, so we're going to take it up to temperature. And uh, I'm going to use the mid welder because I'll have a lot more control. And this surface rides on roller bearings, of all things. I mean, it's, the roller bearings ride directly on that surface. So uh, what we want to do is protect this as much as possible. And I think that the MIG welder, you know, I'll be able to run a bead and run a bead on either side and then just kind of let it cool a little bit. Then run another couple beads and let it cool and run a couple more and just kind of build it up slowly. Whereas with... Uh, arc you don't have as much control now as i said i'd normally do just braze this in and then recut it but you know, I just uh, I'm concerned that the the teeth on the on the gears on the mating gears are not going to be as uh, 
for giving. Okay, we're starting to kind of come up to some kind of temperature. I'm seeing some blue. We're probably up to 600 degrees or so. Alright, we'll just uh, we got ourselves a beat going on both sides. We're gonna let this calm down just a little bit and then come in and do the other the other side. Well, you know, let's see. Yeah, it's pretty warm. So we'll just give it five, ten minutes. We'll be back.
Okay, we got it all welded up, but I'm absolutely positive that there's going to be some low spots in here. So what I want to do is I want to get this, uh, this bearing surface squared up. And then I'm going to come in and face this off. Well, not face it off, but uh, turn it down until we get to about 20 or 30 thousandths bigger than what it wants to be. And we'll see where our gaps are. Then we'll take it out, take it back over to the uh, welding bench, and go ahead and weld up the, the low spots. So first thing is first, we come up with... <clears throat> with squaring it up. And that's pretty close, I would say. Let's make sure we're riding good. Okay, tighten everything up. And since we're 20 or 30 thousandths out <coughs> or large, we can be, well, actually, <laughs> that brought it into within a thou. Okay, so that's a good start. I can see it bouncing around a little bit, so we're gonna we're gonna put a center in the end of this. First, I want to see how center. <clears throat> okay, well, we welded up the the um, the main gear or the drive gear, and now we got to come in and continue while we're letting that thing cool down because it got pretty warm. Uh, we ended up picking up. I mean, the, the, basically, it destroyed teeth on all of these gears, um, but it's not real bad. It's just bad enough. And I think the reason why is because they put grease on these gears. And so, uh, and of course, you know, grease is the, is the, uh, the one thing that will, that will keep the gear nice and lubricated without having to do too, too much maintenance. But the problem is that you break a gear and the gear instead of the gear just rolling around and falling on the ground it gets stuck inside of there and then it just goes round and round and round and just chews everything up which is basically what happened here so uh, i'm going to talk to my customer and make sure that he uses oil in fact probably even a lightweight oil now you know all he has to do is is uh oil the thing every time he uses it just have a little can of oil sitting there I mean we do that um, that old lathe over there of mine is the same thing I have to oil it pretty much every time I use it I just squirt a little oil on it and it seems to be just fine okay we gotta chew up right there this this one is in a better shape than the last one and we got three to do
And the nice thing is, is that the teeth aren't broken off. Like if it was cast iron, all of these teeth would be gone. It's more like the tooth is just mangled. And so we can come in and most of the mangle, we can just file it off.